Hey guys, my name is Pixie and this tutorial will teach you how to automatically send an email to a user when they need to reset their login information using a one-time password. We've been working a lot with the databases, specifically Fusion Table and Firebase. For this tutorial, we're going to pretend that you're using one of those two storage methods and that you already have some user data that looks like this. In this example, we want to be able to send an email to a user when they forgot their password. That email is going to contain a one-time password that the user can use to temporarily log in and reset their password. In order to send an email message, we need to sign up for a third-party service called IFTTT. This is a little website that I found out about from my Cisco instructor. It's basically this really unique way to connect a lot of popular services together in one place. But it can do so much more than manage your time and home, and it's worth playing around with. That being said, if you haven't already, you'll want to create an IFTTT account. You can create a brand new account, or you can just log in with your Gmail account. Once you're logged in, click on My Applets. This menu shows two different tabs, Applets and Services. To get started, click on Create a New Applet. We can create a new applet using a standard conditional statement. If this happens, then do that. Click on the blue lettering and enter webhooks into the search box. Then click on the webhooks icon. There's only one trigger for this applet and it should be receive a new web request. Now we can give this trigger a name. You can call it whatever you want. I'm just gonna call it Pixie Bomb Email. Once the trigger name is set, you'll notice that the condition has been updated, but we're not quite finished. Click on the second blue text and finish the statement. If you created an account on this website using your Gmail, then you'll want to search for Gmail. Otherwise, if you're not using a Gmail account, you want to use the standard email option. I'm using Gmail, so that's the option that I will choose. The action gives us three options for this email. For this example, we want to send an email to the user, so we'll select the first option. But remember these other two options for the future. You could create another applet using the second option to send yourself an email if you ever wanted to create a contact us email form or get bug reports from your users. There are six text boxes that we can fill out. If you click on any of the add ingredient buttons, you'll notice there are only five variables that we can use to create this email. Of these five variables, we can only customize three. The event name is the trigger name that you created earlier. Occurred at is the date. Value one, two, and three can be placed anywhere and can have any value. Let's use value one as the to address. This is the email that's getting sent to the user. We just want to send the email to one person so we don't need to carbon copy or blind copy this email. Next, we need a subject. The subject should make sense for this email. We can use the default text that includes the event trigger name. If you wanted a custom subject that's different for every email, then you might want to use value two as the subject. This would be beneficial if you were receiving an email from the user, but in this case, we're sending an email to the user, so we can just hard code in the subject, something like Pixie Bomb one-time password reset. The body of the email shows some default text as an example that uses all five of the variables. You can include some basic HTML in this text box, or you can include it directly in Abbey Builder. I think it's easier to do it here, so I'm gonna copy and paste some simple HTML that I've already written up. When the email is sent, it will look like this. Notice that we're only using two variables in the body of the email. We'll include the timestamp and only value two, which will show the one-time password to the user. This frees up value three. We can use this last value as an attachment for the email. We can put it in the subject, we can add it to the body, or we can just not use it. When you're finished playing around with your event, read through it and make sure the information is correct. If it is, click on finish and verify that the applet is turned on. If you need to make any changes to this applet, click on the little cog icon in the top right corner. Otherwise, click on my applets to continue. Make sure that your new applet appears in the Applets tab. Then click on Services. Webhooks should automatically be added to your services once you create the Webhooks applet. Click on the Webhooks service, and from here you can access your applet again or sign up for email alerts from this service. Scroll back up to the top and click on Documentation. This is the information we'll need to use this service. Take a look at the information on this page. It's just like the APIs we've worked with in previous tutorials. In order to use this service, we need to set up a URL in a specific format. 
our basic URL looks like this. We can plug in the trigger event name we created earlier and notice that our URL also contains our API key. Everyone will have their own unique key, so your key should look different than mine. We'll need to make a post request in order to send the email. If you wanted to test out your HTML, you can practice right here. We established value one as the email for our user, and you can send yourself an email from yourself. So go ahead and enter your email into value one. In Appy Builder, we'll set value two as a five digit one-time password, which will be added to the body of the email. So type anything you want into value two for right now. We decided not to use value three, so we can leave it blank. When you're finished, press the test it button. You should see a notification that your event was triggered and you should receive an email after about a minute. Keep playing with your settings and the way you want your email to look. Once you're satisfied, we can put it into action in Appy Builder. The free design is very simple. As usual, I've changed the action bar color. I've got the screen alignments to center center so we can see this a little better. And I'm using the same background that I use for a lot of these tutorials, nothing too fancy. Start by adding a label and an image to the design viewer. Call this label forgot password and style it however you'd like. I'll increase the text size so you can see it a little better and just change the text to say forgot password. The image is just here to give us some padding, so I'll call it P0 and use invisible.png. Next, add a vertical arrangement to the screen and call it container validate. I'll set both alignments to center center so the contents look a little cleaner. Inside of this container, add a text box, another image, and a button. The text box will allow the user to enter a PIN number to temporarily log in, so we'll call this PIN. You can style the text box if you want to. I'll increase the font size so you can see it a little better. Change the hint to enter five digit code, and let's change the text color just for fun. This is also gonna be a padding image to give us some room between the text box and the button, so I'll call it P1 and set its picture to invisible.png. The button should be called button validate, and of course style this button however you want. You can change the text to something that makes sense like validate, and since the default background color for this button is dark gray, I'll change the text color to white. Click on container validate and make sure the visibility property is unchecked. We don't wanna see this container when the app starts. Lastly, we need a notifier component and a web component. We don't need to change the properties for either of these components, and we don't necessarily need to rename them either, but you can if you want to. That takes care of the free design, so let's move on to the blocks editor. This is actually going to be really easy. Start with four global variables, call these user email, OTP, IFTTT trigger event name, and IFTTT webhooks key. Now, hypothetically, the user is trying to log in. An educated guess is that if the user is trying to log in, that means they have an account with your app, which means you probably have their user ID or their username stored in a tiny DB on their device so that you can easily access their information across different screens. So let's pretend we already have the necessary information for our user and we're going to hard code in their email address. For this example, let's pretend that you are the user. So in this case, I'm going to send an email address to myself from myself. The next variable OTP should be set to a blank text box. We're going to use a numeric five digit pin as the one-time password, but we want that number to be represented as a string. Now these are kind of really long names for variables, so feel free to rename them, but I wanted them to make sense in case you forget where you got them from. This is the event trigger name that we created earlier on IFTTT, and this is the key that we obtained from IFTTT. Remember that you should be using your key and your trigger events. If you use this information, you'll be triggering my event using my email address. Next, grab a click event for label forgot password. In this event, make sure that global OTP is set to a blank text box, just in case the user has to try to reset their password a few times. Let's use the notifier.showChooseDialog to alert the user that they're going to receive an email. We can include some basic HTML in this message, so we'll just say something simple. In the first join block, we'll write, a secret five-digit pin will be sent to the email address that has been registered with this device. Press OK if the email address shown below is correct. The next join block will say email in bold letters, and the last join block will display the user's email. 
the title for this notifier should be forgot password. Let's make button one say send email. If you had the user's email and phone number, you could make button two say send text message. So they have an option of either getting an email or a text. But we're just doing email, so I'll make button two the cancel button. Set cancelable to false, and I'll just keep the animation at one. If the user clicks on either of these buttons, that will trigger the notifier.after choosing event. We need to specify that the choice we're looking for in this event is send email. In this event, we can create the one-time password. To do that, we'll use a for loop that loops five times because we want a five digit number. During each loop, we'll set global OTP to the current value of global OTP plus a random number from zero to nine. This gives us 100,000 possible pin combination. And that's literally all you need to do to generate a five digit pin. If you've watched the API tutorial, you should be familiar with setting up a web URL. We need to make this URL look just like it does on the IFTTT website. If it's easier for you to hard code, you can just copy and paste this URL directly into a text block. Otherwise, you might want to consider splitting this URL using a join block so you can plug in your global variables. So instead of hard coding in pixie bomb email, we'll use the event variable. And instead of hard coding in the key, we'll use the key variable. The next step in an API is usually to call web1.get, but we're not getting any information from this URL. We're actually posting to it. So we'll need to use web1.request headers. To create the headers, we'll use a multi-dimensional list. Select the make a list block and copy it once. Delete the first item from the first list and add two text boxes into the second list. If you look at the documentation on the IFTTT website, you'll notice that our header is content type. The media type is application and the subtype is JSON. Now we need to structure the post text just as it appears on the website. Remember that when we typed some stuff into these text boxes, the text at the bottom changed so that we can just easily copy and paste this code. We're only using two values, so we'll need five items in the join block. Copy the code into a text block. Then with your mouse cursor, split the text at the placeholder for email. Instead of hard coding in the email, we'll use the global variable that represents email. Then paste the code you just cut into the third text box. Delete the placeholder text, then split the text at the second placeholder. The next item should be our one-time password then delete the placeholder to finish off the post request. Now we could use the web.got text with the response content, and that will output a default message for us saying that we triggered this event. If you don't like the default message, you can just use the notifier.showAlert and say something like email sent. Then we'll show the validate container so the user can input a pin. Once the user receives the pin in their email, they'll enter that pin in the text box and click on button validate. We need to check to make sure that the pin number that the user entered matches the pin number that we generated. If the numbers match, then we can hide the validate container and show a success message. Otherwise, we'll show that the user entered an invalid pin. You can change the alert type on these notifications to whatever you want them to be. I'm just gonna use one and three. Now we can run the app and test it out. This is the design for the Pixie Bomb Squad. Yours will look a little different if you're using the free version. I'm gonna click on Get Pin, which shows a notification that I can receive an email with a one-time password, which is the five-digit pin. Click on Send Email, and you'll get a notification that the email was sent. After about 20 seconds, you should receive an email. In the meantime, enter a pin that you know should be incorrect, like 0000, and press the validate button. This should tell you that the pin is invalid. Once you get your email, enter the correct pin, and you should see a success message. Now in your blocks where you see the success alert, that's also when you're going to enable the ability to reset the user's password. So that's your challenge for this video. And it's a pretty easy challenge. Just like we enabled the visibility of the validate container, you're probably gonna want a container password that's invisible when the app starts. And if the user gets a success message, then you'll show container password, which will have just a text box where the user can add a new password and a button. When the user clicks on that button, the password gets updated in your database. If you've been working with your database, this should be a pretty easy challenge. 
There's one thing I just want to fix before we end this because I ran into a problem after I had already made the recording. Just move this block down here. Right below if choice equals send email, the very first block should be set OTP to a blank text block. And this is just so that the OTP only gets reset if the user wants another email sent and not every time the button is clicked. Good job guys, we are done. Visit my Patreon page where you can find out more about being part of the Pixie Bomb Squad. Check out the Appy Builder community where you can get help on projects you're currently working on and find more tips and tutorials created by community members. That's all for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to thumbs up the video and have a great day. Bye!